The Biden administration has a range of tricky issues to address as it formulates its policy toward China. To take us through those related to national security and technology, welcome now Anya Manuel. She's founding partner of Rice, Hadley, Gates & Manuel, a strategic consulting firm that helps U.S. companies navigate international markets. She formerly served at the State Department under President George W. Bush. So, Anya, thank you so much for being with us. You heard what Tom just had to say. There have been reports out of Bloomberg, actually, that as Biden comes in and looks at China relations, he's going to focus on tech potential particularly technology. Where are we with respect to our relationship with China when it comes to technology? Thank you for having me, David. It, you're right that the tech competition with China is really where this issue is joined. And the Trump administration did a lot to, I would say, shore up our defenses, tougher export controls, uh, more restrictions on Chinese investments in the U.S. And I think what you're going to see out of the Biden administration is an effort to have a positive offensive strategy. What can we do to ensure that we remain the innovation superpower? I don't know if you saw out of the two sessions in China, there was a big um, announcement that the Chinese are going to spend 10 percent more on R&D in certain key tech areas and then 7 percent more for the next five years after that. Uh, that's got to be getting people thinking in Washington, D.C., They've done a lot, the Biden administration has, to try to get tech talent into the administration uh, with the Office of Science and Technology Policy and others. So um, I'm hoping for good things. So, so I, you wrote a fascinating piece for Foreign Affairs, actually, uh, recently, in which you talked about the model, which is, I think, civilian military fusion in China. Do they have a fundamentally different model on how they approach technology and the competition rivalry in technology from the way we do it? Yeah, I did. Thank you for asking. Yes, they do have a different model. I wrote that piece with Cap Hicks, who, of course, is now the number two over at the Pentagon. Um, yes, Chinese civ mill fusion is very different from how the West would do it. In essence, private sector companies in China are required to cooperate with the People's Liberation Army. There are several research institutes that deal specifically with the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. And so there's this whole of government approach to getting the best tech available to the Chinese military. Now, some parts of that are copying what the U.S. did <laughs> decades ago. You know, we have DARPA, Great Research Institute. More recently, we've come up with the Defense Innovation Unit out here in Silicon Valley. But of course, ours is all based on private enterprise and, and private innovation. And it's not as top down as it would be in China. Uh, so it, it sort of mixes in the civilian with the military a bit. And, and let me bring that forward to the Microsoft hack that we just learned about, where Microsoft said that there's a hack of uh, business email accounts. And there are accounts, it could be 60,000 accounts or something around the world. How does that fit into the Chinese strategy? Because Microsoft says it was a state-sponsored group behind it. Yeah, I read that as well. Um it's always really hard to attribute where things are coming from. Microsoft has some of the best cyber defenses out there. Amazing that they were hacked, which means we're all vulnerable. It just reiterates again that each of us individually have to be vigilant with respect to cybersecurity. There is a constant low level of conflict here, whether it's the Russians, the Chinese, and some um, in some cases, the Iranians and the North Koreans, this is just going to continue to happen. And a lot of it happens out of our view. You know, you saw the U.S. government say we're going to respond to the Russia hack, you know, in a time and place of our choosing. There's probably a lot going on behind the scenes that's covert that we don't know about. Uh, so I'd just like to ask you specifically about that, Anya, because I said you've served in an administration. You know what it's like in the executive branch. To put it crassly, do we have our act together? And by that, I mean, do we have clear lines of authority? Are we sharing information? Do we have somebody clearly responsible for cybersecurity for us? On cyber, we do. We now have a deputy national security advisor for cyber. She has a great reputation. Um, I would say I would give us a B to B plus on having our act together. And I think actually the folks within the administration would agree this is really hard to do well. You know, the Pentagon stood up Cyber Command several years ago, now almost a decade ago, I think. Um, I know there's a lot of good stuff happening there. This is incredibly hard to do. How much do you cooperate with the private sector? How much does the government do by itself? Is the government responsible for just protecting 
.gov and .mil domains, or do they have to also protect what's going on within U.S. commerce? Obviously, that's not possible because it's so big. So this is a really thorny issue, and boy, we're working hard on it, but we're not all the way there. So, Anya, that leads me necessarily to the question about working with our allies, because President Biden and coming to office says he really wants to do things multilaterally. When it comes to cybersecurity, given that it's that hard for us to do it ourselves, is there any realistic hope that we can work with allies to make real progress, particularly with respect to China? Yeah, there is. I mean, there's, as I know, there's already a lot of information sharing between the five eyes, intelligence services, so our closest allies in the UK, Australia, elsewhere. Um, so I know that a lot of that happens. You could probably imagine doing even more information sharing with private sector companies that would go through the individual governments. But um, a lot of that is well in train. What I think we need to move on now, and you've heard the Biden administration say some positive things about it, is mm-hmm. as we get our innovation ecosystem up and running to make sure mm-hmm. that we, the U.S., the West, right. <laughs> remains front and center on right. artificial intelligence, quantum right. computing, semiconductors, all of these key pieces. Right. Um, we need to do more there. And you hear the Biden administration yep. saying it, but I think they haven't quite defined how they want to do it. Sounds like there's a lot of work to be done. Thank you so much, Anya. Always great to have you with us. That's Anya Manuel. She's former State Department official and founding partner of Rice, Hadley, Gates and Manuel. 